This is New Zealand, which is located in the Southern Pacific Ocean, about 4,000 kilometers away from Australia, the second most peaceful country in the world. Most people only know New Zealand for cricket, but other than cricket, New Zealand is so popular, especially for its mountain ranges, beautiful lakes, and high-quality natural and organic food. The weather in New Zealand and the UK is identical. Short summers, long winters, and heavy rainfall. Although New Zealand is bigger than the UK in terms of area, the population of New Zealand is not even equal to 7% of the United Kingdom. Watch out on this map, and you'll see that 80% of New Zealand is completely empty. No one lives there. 70% of the population lives here in the north, and 50% of the north's population lives in this one city called Auckland. Fantastic weather, beautiful lakes and large mountain ranges, a high standard of living, a low crime rate, and the second most beautiful country in the world. Despite these features, why is 80% of New Zealand empty? Let's know in this video. Firstly, if you see the map of the whole world, you will notice that New Zealand is far away from the rest of the world. Now the question arises, how did humans arrive here so far away from the rest of the world? There are different opinions among historians over this. If we go to the official website of New Zealand, it states that the Maori people first discovered the country 1,000 years ago. Maori were residents of these Polynesian islands. According to the official website of New Zealand, these Maori stepped out of this island in big ships to discover habitable land in the 13th century and in search of habitable land. They reached New Zealand. This was the same era when Genghis Khan attacked Eurasia. But here the question arises, why have Maori left their old island and come to New Zealand? After doing some research, we learned that a man by the name of Cooper discovered New Zealand in 750 AD, not in the 13th century, as Per Mori oral traditions. A large, giant octopus used to eat all the fish that Cooper, a fisherman and chief of the Hawaii tribe, caught when he threw the net to catch them. Fish was the main source for these people living on Polynesian islands, and catching no fish was creating problems. Then, Cooper swore that he would kill this octopus. In order to do this, he left these islands with some of his friends and stepped into the Pacific Ocean, searching for octopus. In this search, he reached New Zealand, landed there, refilled their ships with basic needs, and started his search again for octopus. And at last, at this Cook Strait, where the North and South Islands of New Zealand can join, Cooper found the octopus and killed it. And New Zealand was discovered like this, and Maori people started colonizing. Far away from the rest of the world, there is no enmity with anyone. Due to this, they were invulnerable, and they spent many centuries in peaceful life, but this was about to change briskly. This was the era when European nations were spreading throughout the whole world just to increase their might. Explorers were sponsored to discover new islands, countries, and continents that could be exploited after their capture and could be used to increase mightiness. In this chain of events, a Dutch explorer, Abel Tasman, and his friend were searching for a continent near Australia in the south of the Pacific Ocean, because at that time it was believed by Europeans that in this part there could be a continent, and if it was, it would open many doors for Europe. In 1642, Tasman discovered New Zealand. After a bloody battle, Tasman saw his defeat and fled with his friends as soon as they attempted to land on it. Again, in 1769, a British officer named James Cook, in search of the same continent, reached New Zealand. And as soon as he landed there, once again, Maoris and soldiers of James fought a war with each other and many Maori chiefs were killed, and the war went so wild that James, like Tasman, retreated. But he was coming back empty-handed. He had mapped the continent, and he was going with that map. And in 1800, Britishers once again came to New Zealand, 
but this time they did not fight with Maori people, but instead dealt with them so smartly. They were avarice with trade and profit, and they, the British, started building naval ports. After a century, they took complete control of New Zealand. In 1840, a treaty was signed between Maori and the British Empire, known as the Treaty of Waitangi. After this treaty, New Zealand officially became part of the British Empire. At that time, the population of Maori was 200,000, but after 50 years, instead of an increase in population, it decreased to 40,000. There are two main reasons for that. First, when the British came to New Zealand, they brought with them diseases that were common in Europe, and Maori hadn't yet developed immunity for those diseases. Because of this, they began to suffer from various illnesses and die. And second, during the 19th century, New Zealand had turned into a place that was rife with violence due to the fact that after the Treaty of Waitangi had been in effect for only five years, a series of conflicts broke out between natives of the area and British settlers, and these wars persisted for another 40 years. As a direct result of this conflict in 1881, a great number of Maori clan chiefs were put to death, and now the British have also come to the realization that they cannot develop there if they do not involve the locals in the process of development. Because of this, the war came to an end. They made the people in the community the most important stakeholders in their endeavors. In this manner, a fresh adventure toward achieving peace and growth got underway. But even so, why is a significant portion of New Zealand uninhabited? And why do the majority of the country's inhabitants live on the North Island? To put it simply, it is quite difficult to stay or develop on the southern portion of the land. There are mountain ranges everywhere, and some of them are rather enormous. Additionally, the Earth's crust is so rough and uneven that building roads in this region is practically impossible, and the land is dry and unproductive. Because of this, nothing can be grown here. These are the primary factors that contribute to the high population density in the North Island. The New Zealand government decided to loosen up its immigration laws in order to address the country's declining birth rate. Non-white people were not allowed to enter New Zealand after World War II or even before that time period. Because of this approach, New Zealand experienced a severe lack of population up until the year 1950. However, as soon as the restriction was abolished, people from China, India, and the Philippines started traveling to New Zealand. This resulted in an abrupt increase in the number of people living in New Zealand. There are currently 5 million people living in New Zealand, of which 27% are not native-born citizens. The fact that New Zealand is home to 30 million cows, goats, and buffalo is an intriguing statistic to keep in mind. As a direct consequence of this, New Zealand is the most dominant exporter of red meat and sheep wool in the entire world. It is estimated that around 95% of the world's beef supply is exported each year. In 2022, the export of this product gave New Zealand a total value of 11 billion 400 million New Zealand dollars. At the moment, the economy of New Zealand is ranked 50th on the list of the largest economies in the world. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like button and subscribe. Take good care of yourself and the people you care about until then. We appreciate you taking the time to watch the video.